Deadly Yoga Retreat is a lifetime thriller that combines two things everybody loves, yoga and murder. So roll out your mats as you watch obnoxious women attend a once in a lifetime retreat that will bring their yoga skills to the next level. By learning from this world famous yoga instructor who never actually does any real yoga besides putting his hands together. We meet our hero, Isabella, a law school student who is searching for clarity about her life. Clarity? Why don't I love my life? It might be because of her husband, who I swear to God I thought was her father, even after he kisses her on the neck. The actor doesn't even have a photo on IMDb because he's really not an actor, but a musician who is friends with Jamie Foxx. Isabella receives an invitation to a life-changing yoga retreat, which her husband is perfectly fine sending her to, even though all the invitation is, is a photo of this hunk. She runs into an old friend, who is a whore by her own admission. I'm currently free and easy if anyone asks. Which no one ever does. The two grab lunch so they can catch up only to suddenly realize that they're going to be late to orientation, even though their food and drinks clearly just arrived at the table. We literally learn nothing from this scene other than how much they suck at time management. The ladies meet their charming yoga guru, who drops cryptic threats like this. Don't be surprised if one of your own suddenly disappears one morning. It's all part of the process. But no one seems to care. During the very first class, this student cannot keep her balance and is told by her sensei that she must leave the retreat unless she bangs him. She tells him that she is happily married, so he sticks a shrimp kind of in her mouth and she dies within seconds. Because that's how allergic reactions work in Lifetime movies. The hotel manager is told to cover up the murder by telling the woman's family that she died from a severe allergic reaction. He willingly cooperates with this psycho's killing spree simply because he is a loyal customer and doesn't want to lose out on his business. The police are never called because the men don't want to get caught and because the movie doesn't want to hire more actors to play the cops. During the next yoga session, one student can't handle standing on her tippy toes, even though she is experienced at yoga and advanced enough to have been accepted into this program. The woman passes out, prompting the teacher to revive her by dousing her face with a cold wet cloth, which he obtained by jamming his entire sweaty arm into the water cooler, which the other women have no problem drinking moments later. Once the passed out student is fully conscious again, she is told to hit the bricks. But just like the last woman, she is offered a proposition. What more can you offer me? She ultimately chooses the yoga retreat over her self-respect and promptly has sex with her teacher in the sandy jungle. But the teacher kicks her out of the program anyway. And if that didn't make her feel bad enough, he kills her with only one hand. The remaining women attend a luau, where their teacher selects four of them to go on an exclusive hike up the mountain. It just so happens to be the only four women left in the group who have actually had a line in the movie. We're gonna need a couple bottles of champagne. Two of the women decide that the best way to prepare for their grueling trip up the steep Hawaiian mountain is by getting blackout drunk. While extremely hungover the next day, Isabella talks to her elderly husband before her trek up Death Mountain, but it's soon intercepted by her greaseball teacher, who gives him every reason to fly out to Hawaii with a gun. I'll take good care of your wife. Nothing to worry about here. The students and teacher begin their journey up the mountain, stopping only to do yoga and camp. After telling a very awkward story about how his mom's drug dealer boyfriend used to beat the shit out of him when he was 12, Isabella has a dream that the yoga teacher sneaks into her tent and they have sex, only to wake up and find the yoga teacher in her tent for real, who then suggests that they have sex. Isabella rightfully rejects him. Her skanky friend, 
even though she knows that Isabella is faithfully married, expresses her disappointment in Isabella that she didn't cheat on her husband with this creepy yoga guru who she just met two days ago. So if you don't want him, I'll take him. Isabella and the teacher get a moment alone and he tells her that he's still interested in hooking up, but Isabella rejects him for a second time. They arrive at a random structure, which for some reason contains a pickaxe, placed there by the gods of foreshadowing. They remain there long enough for us to get the hint that it will be used somewhere in the third act. After some more stupid yoga, the slutty friend takes the teacher's hand in front of everyone and basically announces that she's going to do him right there in the jungle while the others are resting. They emerge one minute later when a student suddenly collapses because her body can't handle the altitude. The teacher sends the other two away to call for help on a cell phone so that he can secretly finish her off just by gently resting his hands on her chest and applying absolutely no pressure. After no luck reaching help, the two women return back to the scene and find the woman dead and the teacher playing with a knife because he just doesn't give a crap anymore. They confront him about his behavior and bad intentions which sets him off into rage. Isabella runs for her life, but feels like stopping so that the murderer can throw his knife at her, which would be the perfect weapon to arm herself with, but instead of grabbing it, she makes the smart choice and continues running with no way to defend herself. She comes to a dead end at a waterfall, but uses the power of yoga to summon the courage to jump off, just in time to not be stabbed in the head. But what seemed like the perfect escape is short-lived because she failed to realize that a lunatic who just murdered two people right in front of her and watched her successfully jump into the water just might be willing to jump off himself in order to kill her and silence her. They miraculously wind up back in the area with the pick of destiny and Isabella finally finds her clarity. Isabella returns to the resort where police have finally showed up for the first time and are taking away bodies. A paramedic sprints across the beach to tend to Isabella's wounds for no other reason than she's wearing a yoga outfit. Isabella gets out of the boring process of going to the hospital and spending hours telling police about the crazy shit that just went down and watches a beautiful Hawaiian sunset instead. Her really old husband finds her on the beach and the two share a loving moment. Did you find what you were looking for? I did. Evidently, what she was looking for was watching two people get murdered and then killing someone with a pickaxe. But in all seriousness, this movie was pretty awesome. Wow, what a throw.